Gray is here on the Blaze Radio Network. And welcome. Great to have you with us. Thanks for being here. 888 900 Pat Unleashed on Twitter. I guess, first of all, uh, we have to. We have to, we we have have to say to, the key. We have to address Holy it. Holy crap. <laughs> we have we to have address what, it. What happened? Bro. What happened? I told oh you to gosh. lay off the sugar, <laughs> the peanuts, water weight allergy. gain. I don't know. What is it? Do we, do we need a pin to pop something or harm what me? happened no no no, no. Just I, just, show, yeah. I, I just want uh gallbladder it, issues <laughs> bee sting <laughs> what uh oh. what happened good morning <laughs> <laughs> it's my favorite thing it's my absolute it yeah it's is my it? favorite yeah. thing yeah, yeah i love it mine too <laughs> Uh, Jeffy joins us today. <laughs> Keith is off, I guess, for what a week. I don't know. I guess almost a week. They had to leave. I guess uh, my understanding. Yeah, your my, understanding. My understanding uh-huh. is that as soon as he heard Bill Nye <clears throat> is going to head to Central Texas this weekend as part of the Planetary Society's two-day camping festival he in had to Fredericksburg be there. He had the, to be for there. the solar eclipse. Right, he had to be there. Yeah, yeah. So, so he's camping where, again. Where in uh, Central Texas? Fredericksburg. Fre- okay. Fredericksburg. All right, good. That's where uh, we were just told by uh, Laura Logan that she was setting up some thing, right? She's doing something in Fredericksburg. In Fredericksburg. All right, there you go. So everything's going on in Fredericksburg. That's the place to be, which is why Keith is there. That's what my understanding. I seriously have heard Fredericksburg, Texas is a great place to be. It's a pretty cool place. It's just so far from here. How far is it? Four hours. Four hours? Yeah. Okay. I mean, well, I mean, Texas. Not, not even a charge. Texas length. That's not. Yeah, right. <laughs> I do that in my sleep. That's in Texas. Yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. absolutely. You, you can sleep all the way to Fredericksburg as you drive, and uh, and it's not a problem. Not a problem. <laughs> I hope you're not the driver, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Triple eight nine hundred thirty three ninety three. Pat Unleashed on Twitter. Got all kinds of uh, fun for you this morning as we continue to make the apocalypse fun. The apocalypse is going on. We all know that, right? Uh, we just might as well have fun while it happens. Um, that's uh, that's our theory here anyway. Uh, LSU women's basketball team left the court for the national anthem? Wow, it was... The game against Iowa Such Monday night. Such an apologetic over which there, was, Which was great. It mm-hmm. was a fantastic game. Who won? By Iowa, the way. I guess. Uh, I would yeah. Guess. Yeah. Okay. Hello. I, sorry. I, not terribly familiar. Uh, I this, know that Caitlin Clark is on that team. Uh, yeah. Okay. It is a Caitlin Clark world, my friend. Okay. Uh, women's basketball. It's you know, Nice they, of her to allow us to live in it. Well, That's great. Actually, it is. Mm-hmm. And I, nice I will say that, uh, you know, I thought... If you want, we'll talk LSU and Iowa. Oh, okay, do so I want to talk LSU it was a great women's game. basketball. It was a huge mistake <laughs> that they put LSU, I believe, uh, mm-hmm. the, the NCAA. I think it was a huge mistake that they... In the same bracket yeah, with Iowa. Because that game, I mean, it was a rematch of the championship last year. Mm-hmm. And uh, 12.3 million watched it. Uh, so I mean, twelve point biggest... three million. What cats? Yes, dogs. Yes, rats. Yeah. Animals. Goats. Okay. Yeah, because I know twelve point three million people did not watch. That yes, game. they did. Average number of twelve point. Did it peak like a sixteen? Yes, it did. Yeah, it peaked at sixteen. Yes, it did. It was it was huge. That's got to be the biggest ever, right? Yeah, I mean, mm. in fact, it uh, it more people watched that game than every MLB, NHL, MLS game last year. Well, yeah, I mean, those are Hello. ancillary sports, of course. <laughs> I know. You know, come on. I mean, and they all try to, they try to pretend like it's, uh, you know, it's, uh, you know, uh, mm-hmm. Angel Reese and, you know, women's basketball is going through the roof. Yeah. Yeah. No. It's Caitlin Clark. No. Oh. It's Caitlin Clark. No question. It's Caitlin Clark. She's the only reason, only reason. Now, anybody's next year when she's gone when she's in the WNBA yes and she will she it'll, will it'll help, be right back to normal she will help bring numbers up for the WNBA no yeah, question she will no question because she's she she's on fire she's she's she, the you know star what, you know what's going on right now is is Caitlin mania like there was Jimmer mania back in 2011 with BYU 
Uh, Jimmer. Jimmer. Media. Don't pretend like you don't know what Jimmer Jimmer for Dead Mania was. Jimmer Mania. Back in 2011. 2011. 2011. Jimmer Mania. Jimmer Mania, man. Come on. Everybody knows about Jimmer Mania. I I apologize for... It was far bigger than Caitlin Mania. (laughs) Come on. Stop it. Uh, I'm going to come over there, and I'm going to dog slap you in about half a second. I feel like... I feel like that's what do you feel not like? true. What? Yeah, come on. I feel on. like that's not true. Are you serious? Yeah. Get out of here. What do you mean? What part of it is not true? What part of it? Uh, the whole Jimmer mania thing. You don't remember Jimmer mania. I do not. Look it up. Google it. <laughs> Google <laughs> There's a, first Jimmer of all, mania. First of all. I, before I look it Caitlin up, Caitlin ma- Clark was part of Jimmer Mania. I'll, I'll That's one what. of the reasons she plays basketball was because of Jimmer Fredette from BYU. Uh, one, one thing that can happen is you can put that <laughs> finger at somebody else to begin with. <laughs> His finger's going to go you in that. your eye I'll in about that. a second. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 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 uh. <laughs> but uh, just say, look, the final yeah. four mm-hmm. for women's basketball is Friday night. And the final four is Saturday for the men's. And uh, look, the only thing left for Caitlin to do is win a national championship. Mm-hmm. Right? She lost mm-hmm. last year, which, you know, against lost LSU. To LSU. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and so what was the score of the? Uh, uh, like 97, 94 to 87, something like that. I mean, mm-hmm. they, they, mm-hmm. they owned the game. Oh, okay. I mean, Caitlin scored like 41 points, 12 wow. assists. Jeez. Yeah. I mean, it was. It's a big game. Yeah, huge. She was mm-hmm. on fire. She was shooting three pointers from. Well, my favorite line from the announcer during the game was from Schenectady. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, she was shooting three pointers. I mean, yeah, uh, you know, at the logo, it was just incredible. from like Jimmer distance. Is that is that what you're saying? Yes, that's essentially what I'm from Jimmer distance. Yes, okay, one hundred percent. She actually credits Jimmer, Jimmer w- for uh, you know her love of bas- of the three point shot and and really getting interested in basketball. She actually has talked about that. Okay, all right, great. So, Calm I, down I with your little you. Jimmer mania. I don't want to hear it. I mean, part of look, part of the Fat Five today was telling you about Caitlin Clark's uh, ESPN uh, special. 96 page special edition magazine they're producing. Wow. I mean, it's all Caitlin Clark. Uh, it's a, you know, it's going to be available, should be available now, actually, from ESPN. Mm. Uh, I mean, they had featured, you know, they had Tom Brady, Serena Williams, Kobe Bryant, John Madden, and now Caitlin Clark joins the crowd for the special ESPN special edition. Did Jimmy get one for Jim Romania? <laughs> you know what? <laughs> I bet he didn't. I bet he didn't. Even though Jimmer Mania was, you know, oh, it huge. swept the country. Uh, it yeah, swept I, the country I, I, in 2011. Except he didn't get a magazine. Uh, I bet he did. 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 Uh, remembering Jimmy for dead sensational senior season. Uh huh. National Player of the Year, my friend. Yeah. So I mean, so is Caitlin Clark. Big deal. For, well, for women. Uh, <laughs> yeah. For, for women, yeah, that's a <laughs> that's a big Kate, difference. Uh, not okay. really. It's a big difference. Not for Caitlin. <laughs> not for Caitlin. I want to know if Jimmy, Jimmy Mania, Jimmer Mania, uh, whatever. Yeah, whatever. <clears throat> Get it Jimmer. right. Get it right. What do you want to know about Mania. it? I want to know if he got a magazine. Mm, okay. ESPN. Because <laughs> I, I bet he did. I bet he didn't. I bet he did. Uh, let's see. It doesn't look like it. Hmm. Well, we got a Sports Illustrated, which is dead now. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't in 2011. No, it wasn't. It's coming back now anyway. Is it? Yeah, somebody just bought it again to bring it back. I didn't... Really? Yeah. Who? I, I, uh, the, Why would you... To continue the like the paper version of it? Yeah. Why would you do that? I don't know. Seriously, it, every magazine uh, is I know. pretty well done. Right? They're obsolete now. Yeah. Can we just admit that? I mean, the, time, I, it not, doesn't matter if it's time, if it's life, I, if it's Sports Illustrated. I, I don't I care what the same it is. Thing. They, now, they believe, I, I, if I remember right, they, it's talk, obsolete. they talked about, you know, obviously trying to, you know, tie it in with all the, uh, you know, electronic media. But I, I thought, why are we <laughs> even talking about bringing the magazine back? It's, mm-hmm. it's not even a, I mean, it's not even a thing. Right. I mean, I know everybody still has their, you know, we still, I'm sure you still get delivered to your house, you know, BYU today. 
I but actually don't. No, I you don't. You don't? No. Anything I get from BYU comes electronic. Really? Yes. I mean, wow, yes. I thought you were some sort of fan, but uh, apparently no, not. Apparently not. No, <laughs> apparently I'm not. <laughs> So, you know, if I don't even get <laughs> hard copies of BYU anything, uh, you know, it's pretty obsolete. Yeah, no kidding. Yeah. I, I don't know that they even dispense that kind of stuff anymore. I doubt it. Why would you? Seriously, I, I nobody know. wants it. Nobody no, looks no, at it. Nobody want, wants they want it. it sent, they want it sent to their Twitter feed. They want, yeah. it, they want it sent right. to their email. Yes. Let's move on. Exactly right. And, you know, of course, because it's far more convenient. You've yep. got it with you at all times. You just I can read look the it stories, up on your I can iPhone. can look at the pictures. Here we go. We're good. Yep. Exactly right. Uh, all right. So, anyway, here is... This was all leading to LSU women's oh, yeah. basketball well, team they, yeah, because walking they say, off the yeah, floor. Because they claimed uh, that it was just a... Okay, so they're not saying this was some sort of protest. protest. No, people were making it into that. But they, oh, but it wasn't. They claim that they it was just they were going about their routine and left the court. And you know, I mean, the head coach was what's her face. Um, she's in trouble now too. Uh, that uh, it was. I don't even know when they played the national anthem, which I thought was a oh, weird. Come on, which now. was really a come weird on. answer. I know. I, I really how thought many that was games weird. have you participated I know. in? I know. Look, you All leave the of court. Them have... That's where the national anthem is played. Yeah, yeah that's garbage. Yeah. Is it that nasty? What's her name? She's I don't know. I just read yes. something about she her. Had a big, yes, she had a yeah. whole big piece on her. Yeah, yeah. Really. And there were some things in that article that uh, I mean, I haven't read the entire article yet, and they've already edited it. I wish I'd have read it the first day because mm. they've already taken some stuff out. Yeah, Kim Mulkey. They've right. already they've already taken some stuff out of the original article. Really? Yeah. So I mean, I don't know what all is huh. true and what isn't, but I'm disappointed that I didn't read the full original article when it yeah. dropped. I started reading and then I thought, I'm not I interested enough in Kim Mulkey to even care. <laughs> Why am I reading this? She was and a, I stopped. Listen, she was a great. You don't remember Mulkey Mania? I don't remember. When she played college. I don't remember Mulkey oh, Mania. No, weird. no. Weird. But uh, her dad apparently started him on basketball when they were very yeah. young. She and her sister. So. Yeah. I anyway, got to, and, I got that far, then I'm like, wow, yeah, you got that I don't, far? I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> it was the first <laughs> sentence <laughs> in oh, the article. Oh, okay. Yeah, <laughs> it, they started That's with hilarious. that. That was the lead. So That's hilarious. Yeah. So I thought I don't care. <laughs> I don't care <laughs> about Kim Mulkey. I don't know her. I don't care about her. Right. And I'm I mean, I'm on. happy Dad was a yeah. That's father. great. I mean, that's sweet. But I'm not that interested, <laughs> and I moved on. <laughs> But here they are apparently leaving the court. Yeah. So you be the judge. Okay, they're not leaving no, during not the anthem, the court. right? They're just right. not there. Right. Okay. They left just before. They they wrapped up. They do their they do their pregame, and then they go into the <laughs> locker room. But you know what? I was thinking about this when I started hearing about the controversy. I'd rather them not be there. Then disrespect the anthem while yeah, they're there. I mean, yeah, just stay in the locker okay. room. Okay, if, if, if even if it is a if even you got if a problem, a protest. Yeah, stay in the lock, stay yeah. in the locker room. I'd rather that than see you kneel or turn your back on yes. it or whatever the. If if it is a protest, okay. Yeah, go I just I don't want to see your protest. How yeah, about go that? Go on out. Yeah. Protest in your locker room. All good. Mm-hmm. Just don't respect the nation in front of us. Right. How about that? So, I mean, even if it was a protest, right? Which they. You know, they say it wasn't. Yeah, and, and like I said, it was a weird answer from her. Like I don't even know where the national anthem was played. We just going through our routine. Mm-hmm. Okay, all right. Good. Yeah, yeah. Sounds good. sounds like it's nonsense. It does. It d- that answer you know? did make me think. Okay, well maybe they maybe they did uh, mm-hmm. actually just say we're not going to go out for the national anthem. Yeah, you know what I mean. Which mm-hmm. is like again. I, I, you know what? I agree with you. That's yeah. Why? Big Fine. Deal. Whatever. Stay in there. Yeah. It's America. If you want to protest, I guess you can. I don't have to just see it. That's great. Court. Yeah. Yeah. It's not on the court. America. <laughs> yeah. America doesn't have to right. see it. Twelve point right. three million viewers don't have to see it. Exactly. And what about? I mean, that's a bad place for it. I think the what, what was that? The this elite, elite eight. eight. Must yeah, have been go to the final eight. four. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, all right. Yeah. That is way too early for those two teams. I to know. Need. You're right about that. I, I don't. I don't understand it. I mean, because I, I was thinking it was the. I was thinking it was Final Four, National or semifinals. Right, but it wasn't. No. Wow. I mean, wow. I guess you figure that Caitlin is going to win, and so she's going to mm-hmm. draw to bring attention to the other teams. Yeah. But 
you want the rematch for the championship, right? I yeah. mean, don't you well, look at the don't you LSU look at must the, not have had that good a year. The three seed. I mean, yeah. You look at the bracket though, and you think, hmm. hey, well, let's give them a shot. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's just move LSU over here. Were they a one seed last year? <laughs> yeah. Were they? Uh, all right. Triple eight nine hundred thirty three ninety three. You know, there's a very common sense reason gold is pushing to all-time highs right now. What was the, the other day? Was it 2200 2200 or yes. 2200 Uh The cost of goods continues to rise, despite interest rate controls by the Fed. Uh, since January 20 uh, of 21, the cost of living is up 17.9%, so essentially 18%. The national debt continues to skyrocket. It's now above... Thirty-four trillion headed toward uh, thirty-five trillion in just uh, probably a few days. So a lot of people worry. Okay, when is this house of cards coming crashing down? <laughs> <laughs> we got a presidential election year. It's going to have massive implications on the future of the country. All of this adds up to instability and uncertainty, and that's why so many Americans are turning to Birch Gold Group right now. Have you diversified your savings yet? Secure a portion of them with gold from Birch Gold. Text PAT to 989898 and get your free info kit. You don't have to go crazy. Read through it. Find out how much of your portfolio should be converted to gold and do what's right for you. And you can convert an existing IRA or 401k into a tax-sheltered IRA in gold and it doesn't cost you a penny out of pocket. It's got a triple, uh, an A-plus rating with the Better Business Bureau. Tens of thousands of happy customers. You can count on Birch Gold. Just text PAT to 989898 to claim your free info kit and protect your savings from uncertainty today. That's PAT texted to 989898. Do that now. Pat Gray Unleashed. All right, apparently something we didn't uh, see uh, yesterday was uh, Joe Biden at this Easter event kissing a little girl. <laughs> Remember when he swore off this whole oh, yeah. uh, behavior? He he was like, yeah, okay, I, I realize it's been inappropriate. I'm not going to do that anymore. And he didn't even slow down on no, it. No, not even close. So here he is kissing some little girl at the Easter event. Get out of her face, man. What are you... Get out of her. Get off me. Get off me! (laughs) That's what she's screaming in her head. Get off me! Old man! I guess if if you're at the Easter egg event, you're there and it's you, you know, you like Joe Biden. But I I guess. Yeah. Because you wouldn't, like... We wouldn't take our families. No, we would not. No, Even if they were chance. young enough, I'm certainly not bringing my group of adults <laughs> to the Easter egg roll right. at the White House. Right. However, if, they if were my kids, kids were little again, no way am I taking them to the White House uh, with this guy. Yeah, no. If, just, if, I wouldn't do you, it. If you went, you said, you know what, okay, let's let's go. It's the White House. Well, it's the big time mm-hmm. event. It's Easter. Mm-hmm. You know, We'll celebrate it with that. Hey, maybe you know. I mean, I don't. I don't know that. No. I, I don't know that I hold my kid up for Joe to come sniffing around. No way. No way. He's too creepy. I mean, do you not at least think that even if you're a Joe Biden fan, isn't that a little creepy? Hey, Watch it on. again. Watch this. This is creepy stuff here. Look at this. Ick, you're I can't, stop <laughs> slobbering on my child. Get off her. Stop. Back off. Yeah. Ugh. Creepy. Yeah. Seriously creepy. I mean, I don't want I don't that like from, I don't necessarily want that from anyone. No, right? I don't. I mean, right. You got your little baby, right. you reach out, you touch on the head, hey, sweetheart, whatever. Yeah. But Maybe. this 81-year-old guy uh, who sniffs hair all the time and uh, creeps around little kids all the time. Yeah, no, no, thank no, you. No, thank you. No. No, thank you. Back yeah, off. this is my kid, and, you know, how about no? I, yeah, yeah. I, I yep. I appreciate it. He, even if you think, ah, it's just innocent. He just likes little kids. Wait. <laughs> <laughs> that didn't sound very no, innocent. No, it did not. But, uh, uh, you know, it did not. even then, no. I'm sorry, no. That's just, don't be slobbering on my child. Okay, beat it. I don't know you. You don't know her. <laughs> okay. Beat, beat it. it. <laughs> uh, but this is good news. 
Uh, Joe Biden, while he's been in office in, what, three and a half years, he has let in nearly the same amount of illegal foreign citizens that Ellis Island accepted legally in 60 years. Wow. So the same number of people have come into the country illegally under Joe Biden that came in legally to Ellis Island in a 60-year period of time. Is that a problem? <laughs> That's not a problem, no. Democrats don't think it is. No, they, they do not. They acknowledge any sort of problem with that. Um, I mean, that is just amazing. Between 1892 and 1954, at the height of the melting pot, Americanization, more than 12 million legal U.S. immigrants came through Ellis Island. Under Biden, uh, the number we've encountered is 9.4 right. million. 9.4 million. That's just what we know about. And that's not what happened at Ellis Island. We didn't just say, hey, welcome to Ellis Island. Go on in. No, they were registered. They were listed. Yeah. We logged them. That's oh, why you yeah, can but... look up census records right now. You can go to Ellis Island and you can find your ancestors coming across on a boat. Oh, you, you gotta, I've seen it. You got a cough? Go over there. Right. Yes. You were kept out of the country till you were well so that you didn't spread some kind of yes. ugly pandemic through the country. Especially at that time when, yeah, oh, yeah. you know, we, we didn't have antibiotics then. So uh, super important. It's, it's just as important now because uh, we're bringing back all these diseases that we already eradicated. Now, I'm sure it doesn't have anything to do with what you just talked no, about. No, it has nothing to do with immigration at all. Okay. Nothing. Illegal, legal, doesn't, <laughs> it has nothing to, I don't even know why that came up. I don't either. In the same discussion. Just a non sequitur. So these estimates also understate the, the real presence of foreign-born <clears throat> illegals. There is no way to account for those, as we mentioned, who evade encounters. Right. If Biden is voted out of office this fall, by the time he leaves office, the number of illegally present foreigners he allowed into the U.S. is likely to be at or above the Ellis Island legal number. <laughs> I mean, that's incredible. Uh and then, of course, if he's reelected, imagine oh my gosh. Imagine what that number would be. Uh, adding the more than 9.4 million recent illegals to the already, I like this figure, 10.2 million. Are you serious? 10.2? That's 2? what they say is already? Yeah. Yeah. Please. Are you, the, the number was 11 million again when I worked 20 in years Houston ago. Yeah. 23 years yeah. ago. And now you're saying 10.2? No. No, my friends. It's about triple that. I mean, they. It's at least 30 million. That. It's at least that. I mean, it has to be. At least yeah. that. Well, and, yeah. and for, for that number I mean, that's a fantasy to be number. floated out there, yes. That is just another way of them. So there's only 10 million. We can give them amnesty. Yeah. Right. Right. Well, that's what it's they're saying. That's why they keep that number so low. Because if they're yeah. saying we're going to give thirty million people, right? Amnesty, no, nobody's going to agree with that. There might be a tad bit of pushback yeah. on that. But if you say, ah, oh, it's about ten million, 10 million people, people, don't worry they're about already it. They're already here. Ten million. They're already here. They're law abiding. They're wonderful people in every way. Hard working, non families, just families. Yes, we don't want them in the shadows. Let's bring them out of the shadows. Yeah. Uh, just the 10 I mean, million. That's the line. Yeah, it is. Because if it's, again, if it's 25 or 30 or 40 million. No way. No way. People are going to say, uh, no. How about no? No. And okay, you're talking about the population of California just being legalized. Okay, all of you're a, a citizen now. Yep. Uh, no. No. I mean, we should be resistant to 10 million. Yes, we should. And it's going to be a difficult <clears throat> task removing any of these people. Oh, it's. Uh, I mean, yeah, it's going to be really, really difficult. I, mean, now, I don't know that it. The ever only one happens, who would even but... have the giblets to do it is Donald Trump. Yes. I mean, he's the only one that would. I mean, that's the only would way we have it. any hope of even attempting it. Yeah. Uh, okay. So we have. We actually have Trump talking about just that, uh, talking about the largest deportation operation that would ever happen awesome under him here he is 
On day one, I will seal the border and we'll begin the largest domestic deportation operation in the history of our country. Yes, thank you. And if other countries say they won't take them back, we're not going to take them back. I will say that, uh, yeah, here they come. You just you know, <laughs> hold on, hold on to your britches because here they come. They're coming back. I, I love, love that. that. <laughs> I uh, uh, love uh, that. That is awesome. That is awesome. I'm telling you, when he does that kind of stuff, it makes up for everything else. <laughs> I don't know about does. everything else, but it does make it does up, for, make a up lot. for a lot. It, it does. does. <laughs> yep. It does. Because that is awesome. <laughs> I will say, well, it is. Hold on to your britches because here they come. Well, that's why people love him. Y- yes. You know? I mean, that is Donald Trump right there, man. That is that quintessential awesome. Trump. Now, hold on does to your he britches pay that off? they're coming. Does, it, does he pay that off? Hope so. I hope so too. But I, I believe he will. <laughs> you don't stand there and say that if you don't mean it, right? I awful. mean, because he's going to get all kinds of crap for that. And tough. He doesn't care. That's... Again, that's. That's the beauty of Donald Trump, they say isn't it? They're not going to take him. I will say, hey, hold on hold your on britches because here they come. <laughs> That's beautiful. That's beautiful. Uh, it is. That's Donald Trump it right is. there. Oh, and by the way, don't forget to purchase my Bible. <laughs> I love it. Uh, see, that makes I me forget the whole Bible thing, which I wasn't excited about. But, no, but what? you know what? Yes. Spreading the word, bro. Yes, yeah, spreading the word. Exactly. During a campaign, making money from it. Spreading mm-hmm. the word, bro. Yeah. It was a little problematic for me, but, you know, whatever. He's he's telling people to hold on to their britches because no here comes your citizens. <laughs> I love it. Here comes the people that came uh, into our country illegally. Yeah. Right. Goodbye. <clears throat> yep. On day one, I will seal the border and we'll begin the largest domestic mm-hmm. deportation operation in the history of our country. Yes, please. And if other countries say they won't take them back, we're not going to take them back. I will say that, uh, yeah, here they come. You just you know, hold on, hold on to your britches because here they come. They're coming. <laughs> it's brilliant. That is awesome. I'm sorry, that's just flat out brilliant. <laughs> that is awesome. And you know the left hates him all the oh more. Oh my for it. gosh! And I say good. Good twist on that. Okay, <laughs> sit on that and spin. <laughs> so great that is awesome. Meanwhile, you've got Biden, Joe Biden's campaign manager, saying that Joe Biden is really not in favor of closing the border. Uh, don't listen to what he's saying. He's really he, not. He's in really favor. not. No, he doesn't. See what they're what they're up against here is. All the pandering that they have to do to all the special interests in this country makes it impossible to keep their story straight. So they have to pander to the Palestinians while pandering to their uh, Jewish base. Oh, they're, they're, they've got that. Yeah. And then they have, all right, we, we got to say we're strong in the border because Americans are freaked out about it, but we've got the Hispanics that we think want illegal immigration, so we got to pander to them, too. We're No, no, we're not going to really, he doesn't really want to close the border. Okay, well, which is it? Well, it's almost but like, that's what they're up against. I mean, it's almost <clears throat> as if he doesn't really believe in anything but the ruination of the country. Well, that's what he, yes, yes. It's almost as if that were the case. But uh, Julie Chavez Rodriguez insisted Biden is not in favor of closing the U.S.-Mexico border, uh, contradicting the president's recent claim that he would shut down the border immediately if he could. The president doesn't talk about shutting down the border and is not advocating. Yeah, he does. And is not advocating for shutting down the border. What people want to see is order and humanity in our immigration system. No, what we want to see is the border closed. Yes, period. That's what we want. We want to see the border secured. What we want is for the flood to stop of of humans crossing illegally, of drugs crossing illegally, and of criminals crossing illegally. Pretty simple. Shut it down. Pretty simple. Yeah, that's what we want. But again, they have to pander. And so you get these mixed messages from them. My hope and prayer is that it doesn't work come November 5th. I guess we'll soon see. Triple eight nine hundred thirty three ninety three. More Pack Ray Unleashed, and we'll do a Fat Five coming up here in a second. Pat Gray Unleashed.
right, got some tweets here. I'm a licking butter tweets. Jeffy on a Thursday. Is it big boned husky lad visibility day? Yeah, it is. It's big boned husky lad visibility day. So, well, welcome to it. Uh, Thank Jeff, you for coming to it. Thank you for being here. Uh, Joe's stabilizing clown shoes tweets. I'm so glad the Blaze added a whole segment dedicated to women's basketball. It was way overdue for that to happen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're welcome. All right, smartass. It was more than just what... There is something going on, though, right now with women's basketball. Obviously, when you have the 12.3 million figure. Yeah. Because usually it's 500,000. Well, it's not <laughs> right? bad. No. Yes! No, it is. Yes, it is, and you no, know it. It's been, it's... Yes! It's Come usually... On. Maybe you get up to 750 on a good Even game. Even I know there's more than that. No, I don't watch no, no there, basketball. there aren't, though. It does. Okay, I'll give you a million, maybe okay. a yes, million people yes. turn yes. tune in. There was yes. there's for the biggest of games game of the three, year, right? Two well, or this three. is twelve times I, that. I, I'm with you. Yeah, it's Lose twelve your... times. Now he's created another women's basketball segment. So thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, look, we all we agree. And look, it's, <laughs> we do. it's a Caitlin Clark movement. <laughs> yes, I mean, that's why we're is. here. That's why we're. I, I right. know Angel Reeves. Great, and you seriously are interested in? It, I, I've watched right? them. I lo- yeah, I've watched the games. I mean, I, I love them. I'm interested enough to look at the headline. Oh yeah, no, and I then move the on with no, my I, day. I mean, that's awesome. You seriously watch fun. the game? Oh, yeah, women's basketball. Oh, yeah, you've watched women's basketball. I don't games. necessarily appreciate the tone in your voice right now, but yes, <laughs> it's a tone of inquiry. I'm just it, curious. It sounded a little bit more than that. A little bit more judgmental than curious. Okay, all right, but. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. But okay. I, I mean, I like watching Caitlin shoot three pointers from yeah. half court. Well, we love that kind of stuff. Come on. Americans love that. Man or woman, we love that kind yes. of stuff. We loved it with Jimmer. We love it with Stephen Curry. And all these other we players loved... in women's basketball, Juju and Angel, they're all great. And I'm, yeah, I'm they're, happy they're that they're fantastic basketball players. But, but we're seriously. not there right. for you. Right. Sorry. It's like, it's like the 1997 home run derby. We watched baseball that year. It, they brought it back yes. after the after the stupid strike year uh, years yes. before that, and it brought us back to baseball because yes, it, it was a home run derby, and we love that stuff. It's just fun. Uh, all right, Giblets tweets. Jeffy is correct. The I- if the Iowa women's team gets eliminated, the viewership oh, drops like a rock. Yeah, nice. and when Caitlin's gone next year, it drops. Yeah, it's it's over. Uh, Pathead Papist. Al Gore was saying 11 million illegals in 1991. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so 30 uh, some year, 33 years ago. That number didn't change until Biden was elected. ICE had a perfect catch and deport rate for 30 years. Amazing. Uh, Patriot Beagles, too, <laughs> tweets the new Dem slave trade doing the job Americans won't do. Uh, from Carl yeah. Smith, if Joe keeps this up, He'll get those 88 million voters over the border before the election. Now they're working on He's it. He's trying. Uh, from Patrick Hill. Have you looked at the odd Dem voter registration surges in swing states of Texas that coincide with the illegal alien surge allowed by Biden? Yeah. Yeah, we have. In fact, we had that chart yesterday that was yeah. pretty disturbing. Oh, very disturbing. <laughs> I did not like to see that at all. Crazy. Uh, all right. Jeffy's got a fat five right. uh, to share this um, morning. You know, the eclipse... The eclipse. Mm-hmm. The eclipse. The eclipse. Yeah, Total cool. eclipse of the heart. Thank you. It's all consuming oh. in our world these days. One granddaughter. Whoops, sorry. No, that wasn't the eclipse. This. Nothing oh, okay. I can do Seriously, is it? The That's what you were looking for? Yep. Uh, <laughs> he was right. looking at you, too. I, was I wasn't happening. looking at you, so. Uh, so. <laughs> <laughs> I realized. Yeah. That's why I went with Chris not saying paying it. attention. Sorry. So uh, this is something I can get excited about, though. I know. Uh, seriously. Uh, starting mm-hmm. tomorrow through April 8th, uh, Krispy Kreme, uh, the donut spot, is selling its total solar eclipse donut. The limited edition Oreo pack treat is honoring the rare celestial event occurring in North mm-hmm. America. I don't know if you know this. The eclipse is That's April 8th. That's good. Uh, it looks really yeah, it looks uh, really good. Yeah, uh, an original does. glazed donut, black uh, chocolate icing, then yes, topped please. in silver sprinkles and an Oreo buttercream. The Oreo wow. sits on top. I mean, come on now. <sighs> that is edible death to me right there. But, man, that looks like a nice way to go, doesn't it? it <laughs> <laughs> uh, you shouldn't have it. No, I should not have it. But 
but we should have them in this building <laughs> starting tomorrow. I'll tell you that. Is that when they start selling yeah. them? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Mm. Good move by them. You yes, know, Krispy, absolutely. Do you remember when Krispy Kreme was like Jimmer Mania? <laughs> I do actually. I do actually. I'll, I lived that. in yes. I lived in Utah at the time, and yeah. the opening of the first Krispy Kreme I, they, they in the state up. was nuts. Yes, I mean people were lined up for miles trying to get to it. Now you, you drive know. by a, a Krispy Kreme, and it's like. Mm, but uh, do you know they just yeah, signed a, a new Kreme. deal? Speaking of Krispy Kreme, they just yeah. signed a new deal. They're going to be in every McDonald's. You what? Know what kind of Krispy Kreme? You know what kind of deal that is? Well, that's I, huge I mean, for that's them. monstrous. No kidding. That's huge. Now, not only, you're going to have the Krispy Kreme shops with yeah. the, you know, to get all your flavor. They're, they're only <clears> providing, <throat> I think, three different donuts in the McDonald's. Okay, but uh, you know, you get them at the convenience stores, mm-hmm. right? And you're yes. going to be and you're going to be able to get them at McDonald's. That's holy huge. cow. That is huge. I mean, that's. That's a game changer. You, for Krispy Kreme. It definitely is a game changer. I mean, what, what does McDonald's have? I think fourteen thousand stores or something like that. I mean, it's monstrous. Something like yeah. That. Mm-hmm. I mean, they said that they it's going to take that it's going to take uh, a couple of years to get production up. But I mean, that is. I wouldn't mind if, if we could deal. get Kexi cookies into McDonald's. Uh, that would be that'd be monstrous. Sweet. So you I know want your Kexi cookies to be in thirteen thousand two hundred and sixty six McDonald's. What? I wouldn't mind. Yeah, you, you wouldn't mind. Yeah. Okay. I wouldn't cry over it, except maybe for joy. Could you ramp up production? Uh, a little uh, bit. Yeah, I'd make sure we could. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> you spend whatever it takes to make that happen. No doubt about it. I mean, uh, that's just... Wow. That's a big deal. That would be deal. awesome. That's By the way, deal. at Kexi, we're offering a 15% off sale today on our Winnie the Pooh box. So there's only a few left of those, and you can get them on sale right now. 15% off. K-E-K-S-I. Kexi.com. Do it today. <laughs> I didn't know they were a sponsor of the Fat Five today. Man. Yeah, they are. Yeah. Just a, a last-minute addition. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so the Walt Disney Company has announced the official launch of Hulu on Disney+. Plus. Have you seen the difference yet? Where you have uh, Disney Plus and Hulu together as the Disney like bundle it. subscribers? I don't mm. like uh, Including, uh, you know, they get all the series and everything. But the Disney Plus and Hulu apps are now one unified service on the Disney Plus platform. Oh, and so uh, you're still available on the uh, standalone apps, but uh, you that content is going to merge. And Disney Plus even changed the color of their logo, and you know you see it looks more Hulu-ish uh, mm-hmm. from the original logo. Uh, and of course, uh, you know, not in the press release uh, is Disney Plus's uh, merge content means. A price increases uh, with ads. Of uh, with ads, Disney Plus and Hulu bundle cost nine ninety nine a month. That's two more than the Disney Plus basic. Without ads, oh man, Disney Plus and Hulu merged uh, nineteen ninety nine a month. What? And, uh, oh and, my gosh, ads. twenty bucks a month. And the Disney Plus's standalone oh, premium offer geez. currently is priced thirteen ninety nine a month. So that means that you get both for six dollars more a month. That's just coming along for the ride. So, wow. And it won't be it's long horrible. before uh, those separate entities. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. No, well, I'm sure. Yeah. Yeah. And as long as we're talking about Disney, uh, the Walt Disney Company settled their two-year lawsuit with uh, the board appointed by Florida Governor Ron DeSantis over the special task district mm-hmm. and uh, over the future development of its parks. Um, I don't know, they went back and forth, and they finally Florida won that, right? They finally, well, yes and no. I mean, everyone says that it looks like both sides kind of decided to end this. Mm-hmm. Uh, they took a person off the board. They moved a couple. They moved a couple new people on the board, which then made it. Uh, they were ready to deal because mm-hmm. I think the two people that they replaced were like, "We're not dealing. Mm-hmm. All right, we're going. This is we're sticking to this." And so they put new people on the board, which then dealt with Disney. So they they agreed uh, will uh, they'll make changes. Uh, they'll the board will help negotiate new development. The federal lawsuit pending the negotiations on the development will drop. Uh, Disney's going to drop the two state lawsuits. So it's all kind of we'll work together. Mm. All right, we'll, mm-hmm. let, we'll work together. And we know that the shareholders back Iger now as CEO. I know they were trying to get him out, that big-time investor, Nelson Peltz or whatever. They wanted him out. Uh, he had some other investors that were looking to get Iger out, but Iger won that. And uh, he's still going to be in there. Now, they claim 
that even though he's not kicked out, they're going to be looking for Iger's successor right now. Mm. Uh, so <clears throat> we'll see how that works out. But mm. you have that, mm-hmm. and there's a reason, maybe, because Disney's Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny. Lost a lot of money. Uh, $134.2 uh, million dollars a loss. That's how much it lost. Yeah. yeah. $134.2 million. I mean, that budget was three eighty seven. dollars Include They spent like $79 million on post-production, which is making, uh, you know, Indiana look young. It, it wasn't a gr- Yeah. Yeah, how much did they say that cost? $79 million. Well, that was post-production. 79 but Post-production, but most million. of that was was the was Young and Him Up. Incredible. <laughs> wow. Okay, we're going to we're going to try to make this 80-year-old man look like he's 75. <laughs> Cuz that's about what they accomplished, and they, right? And, and they, it's only going to cost you 80 million. Yeah, not bad. We could do that. That was totally worth it. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez. So I guess I, you know, I would say that I know about the Hollywood uh, two book financials, but uh, you know, I, mm-hmm. I guess you you can't lose a hundred million and just walk away, right? No, I guess I, not. I, I, mean, I guess you can. Maybe you can. Well, if I guess if you're if you're Disney, you can. Yeah, I mean, you know, Iger seems mm-hmm. to be mm-hmm. you know still intact. So yep, I guess you can. Yep. All right. Well finish up the uh, fat five in just a sec first let me tell you about the jace case uh you know just like back during the pandemic today we're facing drug and medical supply shortages here in the united states things we never thought uh during normal times would ever happen as of march there were more than 200 drug shortages here and it's looking like <clears throat> that's going to get a whole lot worse before it gets any better that's why you need the jace case just in case you got jace that should be their slogan right just in Hello. case, now Just you have case. Jace. Uh, so this comes with a, a flight of five separate antibiotics, and you can get really great add-ons uh, and things like ivermectin, which is awesome. Uh, and then you're set. If there's shortages, if you're out of town and you just want convenience, you've already got it. You say you get, I don't know, strep throat, and you've had it a million times. You know what? It feels like when it comes on, you start taking the antibiotic and wipe it out. What if I have a Jace case, mm-hmm. just in case? Yeah. But I thought, man, you know, you know who needs a Jace case is a relative of mine. Interesting. Can I? That's could a I great am I able question. to take care of them? You can. Yeah. Yeah. You can buy Holy a cow. loved one or even a liked one. Uh, the Jace case, and they can customize it to their specifications. That is awesome. They can get the add-ons they want. So check it all out today. Go to Jace Medical, J-A-S-E, JaceMedical.com. Enter the promo code PAT, and you'll save at checkout. Pat Gray is unleashed. And so is the... Fat Five. Yeah. You should subscribe to my uh, daily show, Chewing the Fat, by the way, available wherever you get your podcast. Uh, someone who hasn't lost money. We were talking about Disney losing uh, over $100 million on, uh, uh, what is it, Dial of D- Destiny? Dial of Destiny. Yeah. Yes. I've not seen it yet. I keep meaning to oh, watch really? it. Oh, really? Yeah, I keep meaning to watch it, and, and I haven't yet. I mean, it's uh, not that bad. It's not as bad as four was you know for the the where he hid in the refrigerator and survived oh, yeah, a nuclear I love that one. explosion i love that one that it's awesome <laughs> such a bad movie this one is better than that but i mean it's still still not great so anyway uh taylor swift uh, your girl taylor swift has not My lost girl. any money and uh she is now on the forbes billionaire list worth 1.1 1. 1 billion mm-hmm. uh, welcome to the list mm-hmm. uh, and i'm surprised there's an event happening that i'm surprised hasn't happened already a uh, sirius xm is going to launch a taylor swift channel uh huh april 7th ahead of the re- release of her new album uh her limited engagement sirius xm channel i find that hard to believe that it's going to be a limited engagement sirius xm channel i mean i'll just give the really channel. they're just doing it for a short time that's what they said it's, it's going to start april 17th is it just her or is it artists like her too 13 days ahead of her forthcoming oh. album which she loves you know 13 is her magic number so the channel is going to air 24 7 across uh, north america and it's going to include all her tracks and then the 13th day of the channel april 19th is the release of the new album the tortured poets department and the channel will play just the album all weekend long wow i mean mm. 
There's going to be a number of people. Uh, Color me there. I, <laughs> I can't wait. I can't wait. <laughs> Last week, mm. uh, if you want to join the uh, Billionaires Club, there's still a chance. Mm. Uh, last week we had the winner of the billion dollar Mega Millions jackpot, mm-hmm. uh, one point one three billion, and no one has come forward yet. They're getting their ducks in a row, I hope. Oh wow! But we have not we, we have not said, hey, congratulations to the person in New Jersey or the group in New Jersey that won the billion dollars. Smart of them. Yeah, you got to get quiet. your ducks in a row. Yeah, mm-hmm. you have to. Uh, but uh, no one won the uh, Powerball drawing last night. So Saturday. Uh, this coming Saturday, the 6th of uh, April, 2024, $1.23 billion, oh, uh, $595.1 billion. That may go up uh, yeah. come draw time. I mean, the Mega Millions uh, has a drawing <clears throat> tomorrow of $67 million, and it's like, Not even worth talking about. I, mean, I, don't even, I barely can stand to look at the... <laughs> I see. <laughs> right? Right. <laughs> what a worthless jackpot. That's that what is. I'm saying. <laughs> I mean, you take the cash payout and after taxes. You got what, 31 million? You, and then you, ca- you got after taxes? maybe 15, 16 million. I mean, I can't. I, I barely, spit at look, 16 million dollars. Oh, listen, I'm going to go out on a I'm gonna, I'll take it. But you will? I, I, it's going to be against my better judgment. Uh, is it worth the drive <laughs> to the bank? Even? <laughs> really? For 15 mil? No. <laughs> no. No. It's not, it's not, you're right. Yeah. You're right. It's not it's worth not. it. <laughs> so, uh, anyway, subscribe to uh, Chewing the Fat. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was, well, was going to get the reason. Uh, just remember that it, for you uh, women's basketball fans out there, it is uh, a Caitlin Clark world, and uh, we just live in it. But, you know, we have the final fours this weekend. So, you know, we have the uh, final four in, uh, in the men's. Uh, the Cinderella team, North Carolina State, uh, takes An on 11 seed. Takes on Purdue. By the way, one. And then had Alabama they not and won the ACC tournament, they wouldn't even be yeah. in the NCAA tournament. Right. They wouldn't have been, They were not. Go, there were 17 and 14 going into the tourney. And now they're. 26 and 14? I mean, Something like that, yeah. they just can't be stopped for some yeah. I think they will be, but uh, yeah, UConn, we'll see. UConn will probably shut them down in the finals. Is it UConn or, or well, they Purdue? they play Purdue this yeah, weekend. Purdue. But, uh, you know, I don't know if they get like, past Purdue, but uh, we'll see. We'll see. And then we have, obviously, uh, North Carolina State and South Carolina and the women's, and then the late game uh, Friday night is uh, UConn and uh, Caitlin. I mean, Iowa. UConn, <laughs> Iowa. Whoa. Yeah. Mm, good game. I know. Yeah. Gonna look at the box score? Or yeah, I'll look at it. I might look at the box score. Friday night game. You'll yeah. be able to catch it. Right, yeah, but I, I'm all booked up on Friday night. <laughs> dang it. Darn. Darn. Oh, dang. Darn. Dang. Pat Gray Unleashed. Pat Gray is here. On the Blaze Radio Network. And thanks for joining us. 888 900 Pat Unleashed on Twitter. Uh, the movie Civil War uh, hits theaters a week from tomorrow. Oh, okay. A week from tomorrow. Kirsten Dunst is accusing the media right now of stoking U.S. division and forcing people to choose a side ahead of the film. Uh, because the media, you know, is kind of pitting this right versus left. Here's the thing, Kirsten. We already have chosen sides. <laughs> this is That's the same Kirsten that was place. a couple weeks ago that was whining about being called uh, being called something <laughs> on the set of Spider Man. <laughs> She was called something? Yeah, they called her. They had some kind of nickname that she was whining about being called. Oh, really? On the set, like okay. uh I don't know, little girl or hot chick or little chick or something. I don't remember what she was being called. Easy enough yeah. to find out. Mm-hmm. But she was whining about that. And she whined about that this whole interview. And then she said, well, but of course, I would go ahead and do a new Spider-Man because I really need the money. <laughs> Shut up. Wow. Would she do it with? Yeah. What's his face? Yeah. Because they were an item, right? Yeah, and then it, I think they wound up kind of hating each other. She said, though, she said that uh, she went on. She was What Spider-Man did for her, Pat, was she was uh-huh. able to then go on to do a movie she wanted to. Oh, that's and great. And she would do it again? Create She'd do it all over independent again? Independent films. Yeah, great. But you know what? Um, mm-hmm. If they asked me to come back on you know one of these big Spider-Man movies, I, 
What a I surprise! You would? would? Huh. No, it's unbelievable. You wouldn't say no to this ten million whine dollars? About how you? I, mm. They called me this nickname, and it was so disingenuous and disheartening. <laughs> well, you know what? Mm. I'll do it again for the money. <laughs> right, <laughs> right. She wasn't that broken no, up. She about was it. not. I mean, let's put it into context yes. in, and let's have some perspective. Anyway, civil yeah, war. Yeah, I was pissed, but I'll get there. I'll take their 10 million bucks <laughs> you again. Are, lying. Are you kidding me? And then I'll complain that that's not enough. I was <laughs> right. underpaid as a female actor. Yes, yes, of course. Uh, but civil war is it's creating a little bit of a dust up, but don't kid yourself. We've already uh, taken we're sides in this. We, yep. uh, you know, we're on the right, and it's called right. For a reason, because we're right and they're wrong. <laughs> that's is that that's difficult, why, right? I mean, there's a reason the right is the right because we're right. <laughs> so we've chosen the right side, and uh, it'll be interesting though, because you know you go to the movie and you're expecting to find out what this civil war is all about, and apparently you never do. Oh, well, they don't. You don't know what starts it. Yeah, right? you don't know. They're already in the war. When the movie starts, you're already in it. Yeah. So and it, everybody wants to know what the spark yeah, was. Everybody wants to know, okay, what caused this? Uh, we all know what caused it. But the other thing they wanted an expl- explanation for is how in the world do Texas and California get together? And they know they don't explain it. Right. Which is weird cuz that's probably the one unbelievable element yeah, that's not gonna in happen. the movie. That could it's not going to happen. Never happen. It's not going to happen. But I'm excited about the movie. I think it'll be fun. Uh, although fun, maybe not a good word for <laughs> a civil war in the United States. No, but these movies are usually it just looks usually really fun good to watch and exciting. Yeah. Well, you know, hopefully, you know, maybe it uh, opens some eyes to you know we don't need to do that. Right? Maybe. Yeah, maybe. Now, Kirsten did say while she's not a big you know politico. She said she is going to vote for President Joe Biden Get out of in here. November. Isn't that great? Get out of here. Nah, yeah. So does she give a, a her Kirsten Dunst reasoning? No, she so didn't. Great? She didn't give any more uh, reasoning. Yeah, she doesn't. Have I'm voting one. for Joe Biden because that's what I'm supposed to do. Because I'm a Hollywood actress. <laughs> yeah, they're gonna and put all y'all f- back in chains. Right, and all my friends will be pissed at me if I say anything else. But she did end the interview by saying, everything is broken. Everything needs to be fixed. <laughs> yeah, but you're going yeah. gonna, to you're gonna vote for the guy to continue to break things? Yep. <sighs> okay, and by the way, I, I, I looked up what she was called on the set that she was so upset about. All right, what and, was it? Uh, well, mm-hmm. we have, this is a delay on this oh, show, right? Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, she was referred to uh, as... Girly girl. Go. Wow. Shocking then that you would do another movie with those same people. (laughs) Girly girl. Girly girl. (laughs) She did not like that at all. She did not like that at all. Yeah. All right. And like when they needed her on the set or whatever, they would just talk Mm -hmm. on the walkie talkies. Uh, We need girly girl. I wonder where that came from. (laughs) I don't know. Kind of weird, but. I mean, I could see how she could be so oh, angry. Oh, yeah, over. yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm surprised she didn't bring a gun to the set and start <laughs> dropping people. <laughs> Whoa, she's not Alec Baldwin. <laughs> uh, all right. If you're a homeowner who's about to buy or sell, or you do it both because you're relocating, uh, you have a major, major issue on your hands, and you need somebody who can get you through that process from start to finish. And that's where real estate agents I trust come into play. These are the best realtors in the country, as vetted by uh, Glenn's people. This is Glenn's company. He put it together when he couldn't sell his home. He didn't want you to have that experience because it's a miserable one. It's stressful enough if everything's going okay. You certainly don't need more stress of having a bad realtor who doesn't know what they're doing. These people have success uh, track records. They've got uh, successful marketing plans. They can give you the advice. They're with the buyers all the time. They'll tell you what buyers will go for and won't go for what you should do to your house what you don't need to do to your house real estate agents i trust the name says it all real estate agents i trust.com that gray unleashed
Uh, a couple of tweets here. Makes car sound. Tweets, Angel Angel Reese is not an exceptional player. She's good, but not exceptional. She's only famous for taunting Caitlyn. <laughs> That's probably... There's some truth to that. I mean, there's some truth to that, but she's yeah. a, she's a big she's time good. star for LSU. Yeah, she's absolutely yeah. a force on the court to be reckoned with, but she's not. Yeah, and Caitlin she's going Clark. home. Caitlin is not. Correct. Uh, caffeinated Texan, Mexico actively allows criminals to cross into America. I'm all for showing them that that disrespect can go both ways. Uh, Peekapool, the leadership leading Pokemon, securely open is a kind of secure border. <laughs> yeah, it's securely open. Okay. Uh, Carol remarks, what? Krispy Kreme with McDonald's? I'm in trouble. <laughs> and I guess that justifies the $20 an hour for its California workers. Yeah, California just passed their minimum yeah, wage bill. Did. Where in the fast food industry, uh, it's now state law that you make at least $20 an hour, right? Yeah. With uh, your restaurant, you have to have more than a, a certain number of restaurants, uh, and then you have to pay $20 an hour. Man. Uh, we have uh, we have a California business person talking about, okay, this Explaining guy from what's gonna happen. McDonald's. Yeah. Here you go. But many franchise owners, like Jessica D'Ambra, who runs 11 McDonald's around L.A., say the law puts an unfair strain on their businesses already operating on slim margins. Do you feel targeted that it's specifically for fast food? Is it targeted? Yes. And I think people just don't realize that. They see this big McDonald <laughs> brand and just think, oh, they've got all the money in the world. And it's just that's not at all how it is. McDonald's, Chipotle, and Starbucks already saying they plan to raise prices to offset the rising labor costs. Pizza Hut preemptively laid off 1,200 delivery drivers like Michael Ojeda. I was very frustrated. A lot of us got our jobs taken from us. He was let go after eight years. What's the point of the raise if you don't have a job anymore? Right. Uh, yeah. Thank you. That's what we've Surprise! been saying. Wait. You mean fast food joints are passing the extra cost along to customers? It doesn't seem like that's what would happen. No, it doesn't. I thought what would happen is they'd just stop making a profit willingly and just continue. In fact, I thought they were going to lower their prices to bring in more people so that they can pay their employees more. <laughs> huh. <laughs> that's weird. <laughs> it yeah. is weird. So menu prices at food, fast food chains across California have already increased. Oh, yeah. New law went into, went into effect on Monday. Monday. Now the prices have already reflected that. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, they were already laying delivery drivers off and mm -hmm. uh, preparing for this, uh, you know, weeks ago. So the biggest leap so far that they've noticed was at Burger King where a Texas double Whopper meal Cost fifteen oh nine on March twenty ninth, but then on April first, sixteen eighty nine. I went up a dollar eighty per meal. <laughs> wow, uh, the big I mean, fish it's still meal. Even, it's still even before that, it was fifteen bucks. Yeah, you pull into a Burger yeah. King. And, yeah, just give mm -hmm. me the Whopper deal. Oh, it'll be. I mean, we've talked about it, seriously. Yeah, I, I, I haven't been to. I personally have not gone through a drive through of a fast food restaurant in quite some time. Yeah, me But either. the last time I went through a Wendy's drive through I was just like, are we are what we normally do? I was like, it was like $70. Yeah, I know. I like, what? what? Yeah, I know. Uh, I know. Put it back. Yeah. <laughs> we'll go to the grocery back. store. You know what? On second thought, I'm not hungry. <laughs> the big fish meal jumped from $7.49 to eleven forty nine, it went up four dollars a meal. Well, I mean, nobody's buying the big fish meal at Burger King, but <sighs> but still, other items increased anywhere from twenty five cents to a dollar. Burger King wouldn't respond to a request for this article. I bet at Hart House, a fast food chain uh, founded by actor Kevin Hart, they increased their prices twenty five percent across the board. Jeez. Uh, that's incredible. I mean, so, of course this is going to happen. They're going to pass the extra cost on to their customers. Yep. They're not going to take the loss. <laughs> I mean, they're already, t McDonald's, according to one story, McDonald's has raised their prices by more than 100% over the last decade. And that absolutely is true. In 10 years, 
they've doubled their prices. Abs- more than, yeah, that's for sure. I mean, that's incredible. You, I mean, you you can't wow. can't help but notice it when you when you shop there, right? Yeah, I mean, it's incredible. Like it used to be, go to McDonald's for a quick, you know, you could buy a couple of a couple of uh, uh, kids meals and you know get yourself a burger and fry and maybe ten a bucks. soda and you're out of there with yeah. 10 12 bucks tops now more like no way 30 yeah 35 lo- 40 mean, yeah if you're taking a family of four you're paying for a, for a burger a fries, a and a drink ton. yeah yeah you're paying uh, and it's just it's it's not worth it no it's not it's not it's not it, it's not it just isn't worth it I'd rather. I seriously would rather just let's go to the. We'll just go to the grocery store and get well, what we want. Well, if it's it's getting to the price of you know a sit down restaurant now, so why not just go to the sit down restaurant? Because they're more than that. Yeah, well, true. That's true. They're not immune from the price. No, increase. they are not. That's for and sure. And they're a lot more than that. They're already complaining. I mean, I saw yeah. a report from uh, Olive Garden saying that they the uh, middle. The middle America isn't shopping can't, can't at afford Olive Garden. To, can, they can't afford yeah. to go out to eat at Olive Garden. Yeah. They said that it really kind of takes an, uh, a, a salary of $75,000 to take your Just family to, to, to Olive, Olive Garden. Olive Garden. Oh, that, in that, in that, in that, in that uh, CEO right. report, he said, he goes on to say, uh, but we did see an uptick in people who earn more than $150,000 a year. Well, okay, so what, they had two instead of one? <laughs> You know what I mean? Five, yeah. ten instead instead of five. I mean, whatever. You know, it could, that, yeah. you could play with those numbers. But the it's, they've they've already stopped. Like you can still get. Uh, they don't have the unlimited pasta anymore. Oh, they, they thought, don't. They have the unlimited. Really, that uh, was their big thing, right? Have, right, but they still. He said they still offer the unlimited uh, breadsticks and salad. I think. Mm. Uh, and soup yeah the soup and salad unlimited stuff but like the unlimited pastas and stuff yeah no you're not doing that Uh, wow go ahead and uh, just get your plate and uh, shut your face (laughs) (laughs) and you'll like it that's right uh as our nation and our culture sink deeper and deeper into immoral quicksand it's pretty obvious that we've lost our way we're not the righteous courageous leaders america needs now more than ever We've lost our willingness to sacrifice as men for the betterment of mankind and in the service to the kingdom. Well, that realization inspired Jason Whitlock to create the Fearless Army and its annual roll call event. It's an all-day men's summit in Nashville, Tennessee that invites believers to fellowship together across our superficial differences and adopt the mindset and strategies that will allow us to conquer the demonic forces tearing this country apart. So Jason partnered with country music star John Rich for Roll Call 2.0, presented by Preborn. So on Saturday, June 1st, you want to meet in Nashville, Tennessee. Come for the great music, the food, the fellowship, and be transformed by the biblically inspired messages, which will be delivered by Jason, of course. Glenn will be there, Glenn Beck. North Carolina Lieutenant Governor Mark Robinson, Pastor E.W. Jackson, and lots more. As it says in Hebrews, godly men must come together and encourage each other toward love and good uh, good deeds. So go to fearlessarmyrollcall.com and reserve your spot. Fearlessarmyrollcall.com You're listening to Pat Gray Unleashed. A couple of tweets here. Nodak Trumplican tweets, Pat, when you and Jeffy get together on a Thursday, it's always a dog-slapping good time. Thank you. No, no. Thank you. It's not sweet of you to say. Uh, KJP's blinker fluid <laughs> says a lot about mental competency when you realize that Harrison Ford and Sloppy Joe are the same age. Yes. Doesn't it, though? I know. Uh, yeah. Kevin Ledford Girly girl came from the movie Fried Green Tomatoes. Okay, was she girly girl in that? Kirsten Dunst? No, I don't Dunst? think so. I don't think she was in Fried Green Tomatoes. Right, Kirsten Dunst? No. Are you sure? No, but okay. uh, well, then it's maybe easy for me to up. say. It's easy for me to say. <laughs> no, she wasn't. <laughs> from Jeffy's pet Sasquatch, Texas and California probably joined together because half of California 
has moved to Texas. <laughs> and the Constitution-loving Americans left in California still have something to fight for. Uh, both big states. Uh, also from Millennial Pathead, I like to think Texas took over California for the Civil War. Uh, Pinky is the brain. True minimum wage will always be zero. <laughs> And I love how minimum wage has become this thing like, well, you can't support a family of six on minimum wage. Yeah, it's not designed to. It's not supposed to be that. It's not supposed to. You're not supposed to be able to buy a beautiful home in Beverly Hills and support your family on minimum wage. It's starter wage. That's why it's minimum uh, teenagers make minimum wage. I'm working at right? McDonald's. And First, get into I'm, the workforce. I make minimum $48, wage. $48,000 a yeah, year. I, it's uh-huh. not enough. Yeah. <laughs> I don't. It's crazy. Of course, minimum wage is not, it's not designed as, you know, life supporting. And we've talked about it at, at length where, you know, that one guy says, well, it, really pay, pay, it doesn't matter because I'm not working. Yeah. That mm-hmm. was the deal. Even when they made the deal with the unions and the automotive industry, and now this deal in California, they could say they're going to pay you a million dollars an hour. Right. But if you don't have a job, uh, you're, you're not making a million dollars an hour. And it's just amazing. I don't understand how they don't very, see that. Very weird how that works, isn't I, it? It, it is. Uh, all right. Back to our fearless leader, Joe Biden. We uh, got a couple of instances from his obnoxious self from yesterday where (laughs) well he's talking about being uh all happy that he's got some deal on uh pharmaceuticals and he's i guess they they um made sure that people don't have to pay more than i don't know 30 or 35 bucks for an inhaler or something and he's been fighting with Bernie Sanders about that. But Isn't that the thing that Trump did, and then they changed it, and then changed it back, and now he claims credit for it? How about you just shut up about <laughs> okay, that? Okay, all right. right. You're right. You're right. He's the president. Pull up your britches, because here they come. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> so yesterday he was in super obnoxious. He kissed that oh, girl. The, that was he, the Easter thing? Yeah, He did oh my this, gosh. the whisper thing. Which he, did, I, he did do the whisper thing at the pharma thing. Like poison. Watch this. You know, and you find out the big reason why we're lying awake at night is it be, guess what? because the drug guess, companies guess what? are charging exorbitant, right. exorbitant and prescription drug prices. Say it. Higher prices than anywhere in the world. And Bernie said it. I was listening in the back, Bernie. Yeah. You and I have been fighting this for 25 years. Uh-huh. Finally, finally we beat Big Pharma. Finally, finally we beat Big Pharma. You beat Big Pharma? I'm serious. Sure. Are you serious? Sure. Not a joke. Don't jump. I'm proud. <laughs> I'm proud of my administration has taken on Big Pharma. Take it on. You joined ways. Big Pharma. Yeah, yeah, I, I can't take Bernie it. Bernie Stop. it Stop. You beat Big Pharma. You, you are Big Pharma. Period. That's it. I mean, are, are you kidding? They've joined forces with Big Pharma. They share patents <laughs> with Big Pharma. You beat them. What? I, that's unbelievable. Guess what? We finally Guess beat what? Big Pharma. Yeah, we beat Big Pharma. No. Not really. No, you didn't. You didn't. You absolute buffoon. Lying buffoon. Oh. They they share patents with Pfizer and Moderna. They're making money from Pfizer and Moderna. They're promoting Pfizer and Moderna. <laughs> now you're trying to tell us that you beat them? No. You completely caved in and joined them. That's what you did. Yeah, but yeah, but you don't have to pay as much for your oh, okay, inhaler. Great. Right, that's right. Because which is fine, which is good. Yeah, uh, it's fine. Good. Sure. Well, you know, I have a son. Have I have inhalers. a son who needs an inhaler. Okay. And uh, I appreciate the fact it's not going to be more than thirty-five dollars, but he can't claim credit for that. That was Donald Trump. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. <laughs> Then he couldn't say the word, is it mechanism yeah. that he's trying to uh, uh, spit you know, out here? I hate to do this because it's making fun of him, and it's, he has a stuttering right, problem. Right. Yeah, all right. A whole lifelong stuttering problem. But here yeah, is yeah. one example of that. And the mechanism and the, me- and the, me- the mechanisms the me- attached me- to the inhaler. <laughs> and the mechanism. Yeah. He said it right the first time, didn't he? I think so. Play yeah, that again. Like, yeah. I, he wasn't happy with it, though. <laughs> 
<clears throat> and the mechanism and the me- and the, me- the mechanisms yeah, attached me. to the inhaler. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and the and the mechan mechan. Me- 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 I'm not sure. I didn't. I didn't watch this because mm-hmm. I can't. Yeah, I know. I just can't. Me, me neither. But uh, I, I don't know what his deal was with the mechanisms. Why that was such a he needed to say it. it had to be said pinpoint thing I don't for the either. inhalers. <laughs> Not quite sure. I, I understand I why the mechanisms is such a big point, but but it was apparently it was yeah. yeah. And the lovely and talented Jill. Oh, uh, oh so she. I mean, if you're CBS Morning Show, mm-hmm. you're man. Are you excited? Oh my gosh, we got Jill. Doctor Jill Biden. One of the most by. surprise appearance characters. No, Dude, it's a I, surprise. It was kind of a surprise oh. appearance. She was there to oh. award uh, the Teacher of the Year. Okay, because uh, you know she's, she's a, a teacher. teacher. That's correct. <laughs> Here she is. Well, when these polls like the Wall Street Journal one land in the White House and he's losing in all the battleground states. Then... No, he's not losing in all the battleground no, states. He's coming up and he's um, even or doing better. No. So, mm. you know what? Once uh, people start to focus in and they see wait, their two choices. Stop lying. It's obvious that Joe will win this election. All right. uh, uh, no, uh, no, it's not Putin. But I mean, they were looking at. You the, keep thinking that. You look at those. Look at the charts of the polls. You know the recent polls. He's underwater on all of them. Yeah, I mean, he's not even close. Yeah, and I think he's done better in some polls, but and I don't know what to attribute that to. I, you know, everything's worse than it was. Worse. I mean, Every, there's literally. nothing better. Gas prices, groceries, everything is worse. The illegal alien situation. The, I, it's all worse. The situation with uh, Israel. The Nobody likes him on that. World affairs. Bad. Across All of it. the board. Why would people... You know what? I'm starting to like him better. How is that possible? I, I don't know. Wow. 888 More. Pat Gray. Ain't hey, seen nothing yet. This is Pat Gray. Unleashed. Welcome to it. Thanks for being with us. 888 Pat Unleashed on Twitter. At this uh, marvelous point from Sonny Hostin on <laughs> well, she's, The Coven that, yesterday. I mean, anytime that she speaks oh, is really... It's like, it's like hearing a symphony orchestra, isn't it? You say to yourself, <laughs> wow, how did you get so smart? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> and the great thing is... The whole panel is like that. Doesn't matter who's speaking. It could be Sonny. It could be that wonderful Joy Behar. Oh, yeah. Who's the most inappropriately named human being on the face of this planet. It could be... Uh, EGOT winner Whoopi Goldberg. EGOT winner Whoopi Goldberg. Could be any of them. And uh, you just think, wow. <laughs> <laughs> She had an author on yesterday. Richard, uh, no, Coleman, Coleman Hughes was on with her. And uh, he has said some things that they don't like. So, of course, they accuse him of being, uh, he's a conservative now. He took a little bit of an issue with that. Uh, but here's the exchange between Sonny Hostin on The View and, uh, and Coleman Hughes. I think the premise is fundamentally flawed. You, you claim that colorblindness was the goal of the civil rights movement mm-hmm. based upon Dr. King's I have a dream speech, you know, content of character versus the um, color of skin. <laughs> right, right, right. Mm-hmm. Bernice, Dr. King's daughter, points out uh-huh. that four years after giving that speech, actually, um, Dr. <laughs> King also said this. She points a society that has done something special against the Negro for hundreds of years mm-hmm. must now do something special for Negroes. He also mm. said in 1968 it was about less she than a week so before smart. he was assassinated. So smart. This country this. Here we, here we never go. stops to realize that they uh, owe a oh. people kept in slavery for 244 years. So rather mm. than class, he did write about Posit. that earlier on. You know what? If any of them are still alive... Let's pay them what we owe. If there's a single person who experienced slavery in this country, yes, you're right. Let's let's pay them off. All right? If if they're I don't know, 200 
and three years old, uh, and they've been discriminated all of this time, then they deserve it. They deserve it. Absolutely. Show me the person who endured slavery in the 1800s in this country, and you're right. We, we'll give them the payoff. We'll give them the reparations. But short of that, no, Putin. No. All right, let's finish this. Earlier on, mm-hmm. right before his death, he made the argument for racial equality and racial reparations. Yeah. And so your argument for colorblindness, I think, is something that the right has co-opted. And so many oh. in the black community, mm-hmm. if I'm being honest with you, because oh, I want to be, believe that you be are honest. being used as a pawn by the right and that oh, you're wow. a charlatan of sorts. He's, he's oh, wow. So who, how do you... Who, who, he's who never voted well, you, you, oh, my gosh. You said that you're a conservative. No, you, you, no, no. No, you did. No. You actually how said dare that, you accuse uh, me of that. podcast that you did two weeks ago. <laughs> I said I was a conservative. He's not. Yes, he's not. yes you did. So, but my question to you, my question to you is, how do you respond to those critics? Okay, let's give him a answer. First thing I want to... I think it's very important. The quote that you just pointed out about doing something special for the Negro. That's yes. from the book, Why We Can't Wait, that, that I just mentioned. Yes. A couple paragraphs later, he lays out exactly what that something special was, yes. and it was the Bill of Rights for the Disadvantaged, a broad class-based po- but, policy. But he also says okay. you must include race. <clears throat> no, he didn't. He no. says it's yes, a- Yes, he does. No. Okay, well, everyone can go, everyone should go read the book, Why We Can't Wait. Let's not get sidetracked by that. Yeah, give me um, I'm, I don't think I've been co-opted by anyone. I've only voted twice, both for Democrats, mm-hmm. although I'm an independent. I would vote for a Republican, great. probably mm-hmm. a non-Trump Republican, if they were compelling. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't think there's any evidence I've been co-opted by anyone, and I think that that's, that's for you. A, an Stick ad hominem for tactic people yeah. use to not address really the important conversations we're having here. Yeah. And I'd, I think it's better, and it would be uh-huh. better for everyone if we stuck to the topics rather than but make it about me but with no, about no evidence you, but that I, I've been I just, co-opted. I want to give you the opportunity to respond yeah, to the, I, I appreciate your criti- the criticism. I appreciate it. There's no evidence mm-hmm. that I've been co-opted by anyone. I have an independent podcast. Mm-hmm. I work for CNN as an analyst. Mm-hmm. I write for the free press. I'm independent in all of these endeavors, and no one is paying me to say what I'm saying. I'm saying it because I feel you. it. Do you okay, also hold on, hold on. We, 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 we got to go to break. All right. Jeez, man. Let me ask you this, Sonny, <laughs> another person inappropriately named. Uh, what do you think the odds are that each of you hideous hags have been completely co-opted, co-opted by the left? Uh, are the odds a thousand percent or or are they only a hundred percent that all of you hags have been co-opted by the left? And that's all you do is spew propaganda for this administration. Under the banner of ABC News. Yeah, right. Right. You're supposedly a news program. In fact, you fall under ABC News' jurisdiction. And yet, you are all propagandists for this administration. Are you kidding me? I know. Oh, man. And since when is being conservative an insult to, to a person? that He should embrace it, actually. Uh, but... You know, she's throwing it out there as if that discredits him. And well, he doesn't yeah, because, want to be discredited. Right. And she is also throwing it out there and he is accepting it that if that were to have been said, that means he's for Trump. Yeah, right. And he's they not, wanted to make that clear yes. that he's not for Trump, but he would vote Republican. That's just an open mind, right? That's right. just somebody who's not co opted by Correct. the left and the Democrat Party. Wow, these people are pathetic. How is this show still on the air? How is the view I don't know. It's been a long on the time, air? Man. A long time. And they continue to get worse and worse as time goes on. They are maybe the dumbest group of people ever assembled on national television. Bet they are. I, Can you name a dumber group of people than, than those? <laughs> assembled on Five national hags? TV? Come on. Oh, my <laughs> gosh. It's painful. It's painful to watch. Might have to do a moratorium on the view uh, clips because I can't I can't take it <laughs> the between cr- Sonny Hostin and Joy Behar. I man, I know. Plus, more people just heard it right then than when it was broadcast. Right. So <laughs> right, why do we bother? It just fires me up. Uh, all right, let's go to Eddie in New Jersey. Hey Eddie, you're on the blaze. Hey Pat, how are you? Good, and you? 
I'm doing excellent. Thank you. Actually, I, I'm not in New Jersey anymore. I, oh. Thank God I got rid of that place. I'm in Tennessee. All right. Well, welcome. <laughs> so uh, I was calling to see, is this uh, Flap Jackson in uh, 99 won, won the Frog? Mm-hmm. <laughs> it could be. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I got a bingo. Oh, All nice. Right. All right, good. Nice. Where, where'd, where'd the bingo occur? Well, we started on the second road down with mm-hmm. uh, God Save the Queen. Okay. Market of Beast. Yes. Uh, the Biden administration sucks. Get off me. And the, the most important one to me, mm-hmm. we don't tolerate that shame. Thank you. <laughs> All Thank right. you. That's uh, <laughs> me as well. Yeah. That's so yeah. important. Jeffy's really, it's, he's on a crusade right now. This, well, listen, this show, yeah. you know, mm-hmm. we crosses we, that line. No. Way too often. No. This, this show does not tolerate. Fat I know what it's, I know what I know what said indicates. I know. Let me. So <laughs> uh, I don't know where you're coming from on uh, that. Okay, but Eddie. Congratulations. We got the. Uh, did we get the information from you for the? Uh, f- yes. All the prizes. All right. Thanks a lot, man. Appreciate your listening. So we got. He got the uh, thirty dollars worth of merchandise from PatGrayShop.com and the dozen Kexi cookies from Kexi.com. K e k s i dot com. Where we got that fifteen percent off sale. On our spring line of Witty the Pooh boxes. <laughs> really great specialty boxes. Still available. Let's go to K E K S I dot com. Exactly. Pronounced Kexy. Like sexy. Like sexy, only, only with, with a, a K. K. <laughs> Gross. Please do not use that. <laughs> Did you know that Fast Growing Trees is the biggest online nursery? In the United States of America, they have more than 10,000 different kinds of plants, over 2 million happy customers. They have everything you could possibly want, fruit trees, palm trees, evergreens, house plants, so much more. Whatever you're interested in, they have it for you, uh, and they'll help you pick it out for the climate that you're in. Like, if you're in Maine right now, you're, you've got a different situation than we have down here in Texas, which is why... Uh, they recommended just the right kind of tree for my yard. Uh, put it out in the front. It's a nice shade and it's beautiful to look at, and it increases the curb appeal on the house. They'll give you that free consultation, and you've got that going for you forever. This spring, they have the best deals online, up to half off on select plants and other deals. And listeners to the show get an additional 15% off their first purchase when you use the offer code PAT at checkout. So 15% off at checkout at fastgrowingtrees.com. Use the promo code PAT, fastgrowingtrees.com. Offer valid for a limited time. Terms and conditions may apply. This is Pat Gray Unleashed. So KJP was asked yesterday about the Strategic Petroleum Reserve, which has been so greatly depleted. Now, they promised us, yeah, we're going to put that right back in there. Uh, We got a plan right now to fill that right back up. Yes. And uh, so they haven't done that. No, they have not. Why haven't they done it? Well, KJP was asked that very question. uh, So you guys started draining the Strategic Petroleum Reserve to try and help with the Putin price hike a few years ago said you were going to refill it, but now it doesn't seem like that's happening. Hmm. Why? Well, from I, I believe well, the Department the, of Energy mm-hmm. is uh, is responsible for, for that uh, particular uh, component, is refilling mm. refilling that, so I would refer you to the Department of Energy. I know there are certain components to that uh, and how the they were going to components. move forward in refilling, uh, refilling it. I, they would have more specifics on that. Yeah, okay. Uh, so they're not. So she doesn't know. We're She's just going to blame it on the that. Department of Energy. Isn't yeah. the Energy Department under... Uh, the Biden administration. <laughs> yeah, it is. Okay. Yeah, but let me refer you to them on that, and they'll tell you whether or not they're subject to us or or whatever. Remember, okay. remember way back in 2020 when he was uh, you know running for president or just became president, whenever that. I mean, how old were you in 2020 though? I was four years old, so I don't remember this. But go ahead. With well, it. there was a time when he said that if he was elected president, so this was prior to him. Yeah. Actually, being president. Oh, see, that's too far back. That's too far back. That he mm-hmm. that he would choose to unite than divide. He he would choose to unite rather than divide. He said Joe Biden. Said he that. said, "I'll hmm. take responsibility." Oh wow! Instead of blaming others. <laughs> 
No, he did not he, say that. I will never forget that the job isn't about me. Oh, it's about gosh. you. Oh, can you believe this? How'd that turn out? I mean, so far. <laughs> How's your presidency <laughs> going? So, so far. far. Huh. It's it's really close to that. It's just the opposite. Um, exact of opposite. The exact opposite. I mean. <laughs> That's incredible. When you look back at that, yeah, I'm going to be a uniter, not a divider like this guy, uh, this Donald Trump person. And uh, the buck stops with me. The buck stops here. I will I will accept full responsibility for my actions. Has he ever done that once? No. You know he hasn't. He's never accepted personal responsibility on anything. And you talk about... Uh... Of the uh, uh, Strategic Petroleum Reserve, yeah. it's gone down 43% since January of 2021. Wow. Uh, we need to get to replenishing. Pretty much, yeah. Yeah, and the prices have gone way back up. So if we do that now, it's going to be incredibly expensive. I no, mean, he's could, bringing the prices down. Yeah, right. But it was a great question by Ducey because they haven't been doing it. And if, they, if she says, well, we're doing it right now, why'd you wait till now when the prices are back up? You can't win on that, so she's got to refer you to another agency. Look, there's <laughs> there's components. The buck stops with the Department of Energy. <laughs> remember that old another saying? Component. I do remember the old yeah. saying. Rolls the, right off the tongue. Yeah, the buck stops with the Department of Energy. If I've said that once, <laughs> well, I've said it once. once. So uh, <laughs> you're welcome. I mean, they're just terrible. Oh my God, they're just terrible. Seriously, the worst people. On the face of the earth. Now, one of the worst people on the face of the earth, uh, in my humble opinion, for years, was Richard Dawkins, world-renowned oh, atheist. Yeah. World, world I mean, that, that guy uh, is always complaining about religion. and It should have no place in American society and blah, 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 blah. <laughs> here's, what, uh, here's what Dawkins said about it uh, back in 2011 about religion. Um, lots and lots of people are not religious themselves, but they've got a vague idea it's a good thing that other people are. It's very patronizing and condescending, by the way. It's sort of mm. the attitude, well, you and I, of course, are too intelligent to be religious, but the common people need it. Um, and there are a lot of people who actually think that. A lot of people think that we need religion in order to be moral. Mm. They, they, mm -hmm. There are a lot of people who think that if you took religion away, people would start, you know, hmm. ru rushing around, smashing shop windows and robbing and raping and things like that. Huh. No evidence for that, whatever. No evidence. I mean, absolutely no. none. No. So I think one important thing we've got to do is to prize apart religion from morality. It's absolute mm -hmm. nonsense to say that you need religion in order to be moral. And so I think that would be one major step we could we could take. You mm -hmm. don't okay. need to send okay. your child to a faith school no. in order to instill in that child faith. a sense of morality, a sense of good citizenship. Okay. Sure. For whatever reason, mm -hmm. even in a secular country like this, mm -hmm. we have arrived at a point where there's a sort of latent belief within the popular consciousness that to be scientific is to somehow be sort of desiccated and dry mm -hmm. and uh, mm -hmm. to miss out on the magic and mystery of mm -hmm. one's experiences and the, the world and so on. You dispute that, right? So Not only dispute it, I mean, it's just the exact opposite of the truth. Oh. Science is wonderful. Science is amazing. Science is wonderful and amazing. The, the fact that you could understand mm -hmm. why you exist, who could uh -huh. not be turned on, who could not be excited by that, yeah. who would ever right. want right. to live in a world who would where want? you live your life, yeah. you go to work, mm -hmm. you go to the office, whatever it is, you go to the football match, and this goes on year after year, and sure. then you die. And you don't have any understanding of why you were there in the first place uh -huh. that's desiccated that's dry what oh. is not dry and desiccated is coming into the world as it were awakening in the in the world ah. and awakening in the fullest sense mm -hmm. of of seeing the universe seeing the stars seeing down a mm -hmm. microscope mm -hmm. you know who the ultimate scientist is uh god uh yeah so here we go uh, <laughs> here we go here we go <laughs> <laughs> yes yes here we go who essentially invented science? Uh, God. Yeah. Yeah. So. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Isn't it, though? It is interesting. It's interesting. Yeah. It's also interesting what Richard Dawkins just recently said uh, about Christianity. It's still an atheist, but listen to this. I do think that we, we are culturally a Christian country. I'm, I call myself a cultural Christian. I'm, I'm not a believer 
but there's a distinction between ah. being a believing Christian and being a cultural Christian. And so, you know, I I love and hymns and Christmas carols I and Christian, um, Christmas carols. I, I sort of feel at uh-huh. home at home in the Christian ethos. If I had to choose oh, between Christianity weird. and Islam, I choose Christianity every single time. Huh. I mean, it seems to me to be dare you. a, a <laughs> dare fundamentally you. decent religion Oh, um, in a way that I think oh. Islam is not. Oh, wow. I think you're going to have to explain why you say that, Professor Dawkins. Why is Islam profund- well, pro- the, the way, the fundamentally way the- not decent mm. like Christianity? Yes, I mean, the, the, mm-hmm. the, the, the way women are treated. I mean, Christianity is not great about that. Uh, it's okay. had its problems sure. with female vicars and female bishops and things. Uh-huh. But there's an active but. hostility to women, which is promoted, I think, by the huh. holy books of Islam. Uh-huh. Not talking about individual Muslims, who, of course, are uh, quite, quite, different. quite but different. the But the doctrines yeah. of Islam, the Hadith mm-hmm. and, the, and the Quran, uh-huh. is fundamentally um, hostile oh. to women, hostile to gays, uh-huh. um, and uh, uh, I yes. find uh-huh. that I Hello. like to live in a culturally Christian country, although I do not believe a single <laughs> word of the Christian faith. <laughs> I mean, that's interesting, isn't it? That's a, that seems like a shift in his it sure does in in his ethos, if you will. Well, since that last interview, right in two thousand eleven, yeah, yeah. Uh, where he wanted of, nothing to do with any of many it. of the things. If if that were true, that you'd see all of this violence going on, and yeah. uh, look right. around, Dick. Yeah. Uh huh. I'm sorry, Richard. Richard, Dick, <laughs> whatever. Uh, they're both accurate. But I will say, cultural Christianity from Richard Dawkins, pretty interesting. You know why? Because he has seen the decay of society yes, and civilization. Exactly. That's why. Exactly. He sees our very civilization crumbling around us and what keeps it together. And he's seen, huh. you want to talk about changing of the ethos. Mm. Yeah. Uh, uh, he's probably living in London or at least in the UK. Uh, mm-hmm. That ethos has tra- changed dramatically sure has sure uh, has with uh islam leading the way yep and uh yep how's that ethos working out well he sees what happens when you ignore that ethos and you allow the the culture and the society to just accept whatever uh and the values of the people coming in and you don't do anything about it right and they start to change your values and your foundation and once you've built your foundation on those principles and then people start taking a jackhammer to it something bad is going to happen and he understands that now yep. apparently there, there's really no denying it anymore is there i mean you can't deny it look what's happened since we've shunned christian christian values yeah i mean you start with really uh, and things started going haywire a little bit before this to a certain extent. But once we stopped prayer in schools yep. and you couldn't pray anymore in school and you couldn't talk about it in school and you had to avoid all references and we started to get this separation church between state. church, church and, state and state nonsense yeah. that doesn't exist in the U.S. Constitution. There is no such phrase in the Constitution. But that became our battle cry. Separation of church and state. You can't even talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> What's happened to us since then? Are we better, worse, or about the same, as your optometrist might ask? <laughs> about now, better, better, worse, or about the same? Well, we know it's far worse, and it's getting worse every minute of every day. And it's time to tap the brakes on that. In fact, slam the brakes on even Richard Dawkins, world-renowned atheist, is saying it. Well, he's- He's like, well, that's incredible. Well, he's not saying. Well, he's, he's saying, saying culturally. Cultural we mean, yes, right. I mean, let's not get ridiculous no, and start not. worshiping God. <laughs> right? Here we go. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Here we go. I mean, the yeah. guy has spent a lifetime mm-hmm. just saying yeah. how wrong it is. Yes. And, and how he doesn't want to hear it. I don't want to see yeah. it. I don't want to hear it. I don't. I don't want to be accosted by it. I don't want to look at it. And now, a little bit different you know, situation. Have you ever heard Richard Dawkins say, I like Christmas hymns? <laughs> <laughs> I like Christmas carols. I like Christmas. Wow. Huh. All right. Well, Christmas is just a, Christmas is just a thing. 
Yeah, well, it's, it's the thing. It's a celebration just of a Santa thing. Claus giving gifts. That's and stuff. all. Who doesn't like that? Who doesn't like that? Well, he does. He likes it. As I know. That's what I mean. By the way, that reminds me of the uh, Joe Biden situation for Easter, where we all, in in fact, we we talked about the fact that they removed religiosity from the Easter egg roll. Yeah, that apparently uh, is a thing, but it's been a thing for thirty years or something. So Biden did yeah. not institute yeah, yeah, that yeah, yeah. So with the, with the artwork on the on the yeah. eggs and all that stuff. They've had yeah. that rule for a while. Well, I mean, yeah, because that's where they took got out of schools, right? I mean, you could yeah. when they did that, they, the kids. Oh my gosh, don't. You can't put a cross on an it's, egg. It's the whole dumb separation of church yeah. and state thing again, which doesn't exist. There's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with using religious symbols on an Easter egg hunt at the White House. That's perfectly fine. When you've got Congress who printed and distributed the first Bible in this country, uh, the United States of America and Congress did that, uh, you might... I don't know, come to the realization that maybe there's not this fakey separation between the two. You just don't want a state religion where they force something on us. All right, overtime coming up. This is Pat Gray Unleashed.